What the hell was that? I'm Menoskai and this is Gameology88, where I talk about all things video game industry. Today I want you to take a trip down memory lane with me back to my childhood. Back when the only video games I knew were the MS-DOS ones on my PC, there came a time when my mother decided to buy me a console, and it was a Mega Drive supermarket knockoff with a yellow cartridge full of 8 and 16-bit games. I called it Chippo. Still, Chippo was an enjoyable experience. It had Duck Hunt, Super Mario, Battle City, Karateka, but still, after a while, another console came into my life, and that was the Nintendo 64, my first real console. And my first game as a 10 years old was this. Yoshi's Story. Me and my brother played the ever-loving out of this being the only game we had for it. I remember liking it a lot, I remember the Yoshi's lullaby that never got out of my head. But for some reason I also remember this being scary. And 5 minutes into the game as an adult I can for the life of me understand why. Well, what do you say we dive right into it and solve this mystery? Oh, it looks like a pop-up storybook! Story time! So, once upon a time, the Yoshis were all yoshing around. Which, I guess, means eating random dudes, turning them into eggs, you know, Yoshi stuff? But all of a sudden, they all get the swirly eyes! Also, the super happy tree is gone! My guess is they probably all ate it. That or the Koopas suddenly deployed their newest biological weapon, the Stoner Guy! Anyway, the only Yoshis to escape the liberal-induced carnage are six who were eggs, who were then born with running shoes and adult mental faculties, which allow them to deduce that the culprit is Baby Bowser. It also allows them to think of a solution, get the super happy tree back, by becoming super happy themselves, by eating fruit. I was 10 when I got this game. I think I was already too old of a target demographic. Well, let's press that start button. We got story mode, we got trial mode, we got options, we got practice. Mm, I'm not a fan of tutorials that are separated from the main game. They ruin the immersion. But screw it, let's see what the Yoshi can do and oh my god, they were trying really hard to make this as cute as possible. Look at this background! And I'm not sure if I like it. This is supposed to be a sequel to Yoshi's Island and the gameplay sure shows it. You can eat enemies, turn them into eggs, throw side eggs, you can... Also... Also, this time you can sniff the air to look for secrets. Still, Yoshi's Island was designed to look like pastel drawings. Even as an adult, you can appreciate like that. This World Pop-Up Storybook thing though is clearly intended for kids only. Then there's the purpose of the game. In Yoshi's Island, you help the baby Mario go save baby Luigi. Here, you go around eating fruit. That's it. Eat dirty, the level's over. I'm sure Kid Me loved it, but as an adult I find it a bit... Uh, tacky. But never mind wearing stripes with played, let's go and play that story mode. Looks like last time me or my brother played it, we were at part 3. Oh, a sky stage! But it wouldn't be a real playthrough if I cheated like so. Let's go back to part 1. I can't go back? Wait, seriously? I can't select the levels I want to play in story mode? Either I finish my playthrough or I delete my save file? And one more thing, I'm certain I beat this game. Why aren't all the levels available in trial mode but only a few? Okay, I need to research this real quick. Screw whoever designed this game. Okay, not screw, but I'm really disappointed in you, young man! 
Only the first stage has all its 4 levels already available. To unlock the others, you have to explore and look around for these giant hearts. If you collect all 3 of them, you unlock all the 4 levels in the next stage. If you miss one, tough luck! To unlock them in trial mode, you have to beat them, and since after beating a single level you immediately get brought to the next stage... Let's do a few calculations, you do yours, I do mine, I'll wait, I'll wait. You don't? Well, let's see for Rens vs. Smash 4! 4! To beat this game completely, you have to beat it from beginning to end at least 4 times! That should be an option, never a condition, especially a condition that puts 75% of your game behind a wall. And one more thing, in this game you get no life system, you get a Yoshi system. You only get 6 Yoshi and that's it. Lose all of them, you have to start all over again from the beginning. Am I playing an arcade game here? Oh god, I just realized, I haven't even started playing this yet! Alright, let's start with the sky level. Okay, so this white block tells me to ride one of those creepy smiling snakes and that jumping on it changes directions. Mm, well, how hard can it be? Come on. Off for the level! Jesus, they really needed to work some more on the physics, they control like crap! I lost count of how many times I overjumped and fell and had to start with yet another snake! And I really need to stop saying things like that. 9 minutes in and I'm still at only half the total. Let's hope there are at least no more snakes in our future. Huh? What are those shy guys doing in the background? Could it be? Okay, that was uh, mildly entertaining, and thank god, no more snakes! To get to the last fruits, we're going to ride this much larger and not creepy looking dragon. A minus 3, 2, 1, we beat the level guys, on to the... Uh, wait, it is, is, is this a boss battle? A cotton candy cloud boss? And in fact, this boss battle is pathetically easy, just keep on licking at it until it disappears. Also, every time you eat a piece, you get some energy back. So, unless you really suck at platformers, you can beat it in under 2 minutes, like I did. Afterwards, we're presented with a shower of hearts and a narration and music that makes it look like we beat the game when we were only at the halfway point, I think. A pitch call and uh, a jungle level. Well, this is much quicker, no creepy snakes to ride this time. Okay, I really need to stop saying that, especially since this Yoshi just barely left the rats. The jungle level finishes much quicker. This game is designed to keep you busy not with the actual length of the level, but with the need for exploration, puzzles and backtracking. That also means that there are things that you can miss by getting all your fruit before getting there, like this Gabon they mention here. I never met any Gabon. Well, another page, another level... Oh, oh no... NOT AN UNDERWATER LEVEL! An underwater level which starts by giving me a checkpoint! Now, that doesn't sound eerie at all, does it? Let's frolic right into that pipe and... Oh god, there are no enemies for me to eat! No eggs for me to throw! My gosh, is defenseless! Defenseless in a sea of jellyfish! Is the red one stalking me?! Oh my god! Oh my god, it is stalking me! My Yoshi is being stalked by jellyfish! And the fruit is inside jellyfish! I have to lick the jellyfish! Uh, oh, good! A power heart! And now I'm invincible! Ew, 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 ew! They're ganging up on my Yoshi! Ew! Get out of there before invincibility runs out! Into the pipe! Into the pipe! Oh, we're safe. No more jellyfish! Oh my god! Jesus Christ, now I understand why I thought this was scary as a kid! There is nothing worse than being in a situation where you can't defend yourself with the enemies stalking you everywhere and GOD! Why did they put eyes on the jellyfish? It just made them more creepy!
Fortunately, we're finally at Baby Bowser's castle, which, for all the machinery of that in it, is not nearly as scary as the underwater level, nor as hard. Not that any of this game has been hard. At all. And this incarnation of Baby Bowser must be the easiest final boss I've ever seen. There are two stages to him. In the first, you're supposed to throw bombs at the ceiling and make it fall on him, but if you still have eggs, you can just throw them so that he runs into the blast radius. Then he gets off the discount slimer there and attacks you personally. You're supposed to throw bombs at him, but don't. Throw them at walls as he lands, then ricochet and hit him. Rinse, repeat three times, you're done. Also, since the super happy tree is in the same room and it gives you an infinite supply of fruit and energy, yeah, there is virtually no way you can lose this. You win, Baby Bowser gets carried away in tears, which makes me feel somewhat bad. We get a recap of the whole thing and the epilogue. The tree is happy, everyone's happy, they go back to eating dudes. The end. Which also means the end of my nostalgia goggles for this game. It's not as fun as I remembered, but it all boils down to it being created for kids. This game is way too easy for an adult, and I don't think it was that hard for me as a kid either. It was designed to just make them feel good and accomplished real quick, which means that putting 75% behind multiple replays was counterproductive. Did they really think that the same audience that designed this for so that it would be easy and quick to beat would go back and replay it for the love of a challenge? I see some fallacious logic here! Still, it's not all bad. I like the music and for the crowd it was created for, this is probably the perfect game to introduce them to video games, like they did for me. But there is one mystery left. I remember this being scary for one more reason. Specifically, I remember being scared of when I lost a Yoshi. I can't remember why, and since I didn't lose even once in this playthrough... Oh well, I feel like a dick, but uh, let's go to trial mode, pick the yellow Yoshi, Jesus, this core palette is horrible, die on purpose and see what happens. <laughs> They didn't realize what that looked like at all, did they? Or maybe they did? Hey students, I want to hear from you now. What was your first game? Did it hold up over the years or is it now not as good as it was when you were younger? Let me know in the comments or on one of my social media accounts. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I love me some subscribers more than fruit or enemies. Not that I hit them.